Welcome fellow recovering traditionalists to episode 162, Approximation, Precision, and Accuracy in Measurement. Welcome to Build Math Minds, the podcast, where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the recovering traditionalist and buildmathminds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. Before we get into the episode, this week's positivity comes from Bethany, who is a member of the Build Math Minds PD site, and she was a winner of one of our monthly math goodie boxes that we give away. Each month inside the PD site, I create a monthly mission for our members. Everyone who completes the mission fills out a form and that enters them into the drawing for the goodie box. It's filled with some of my favorite things and some are mathy, some are just personal. This month's mission that we are currently doing right now for our members is to snap a picture of something mathematical in their life. That's their mission. That's all they've got to do. Then I'm compiling those into a Google slide file that shows the picture and gives mathematical questions that you can ask students. It's looking like that completed document once we're done at the end of the month is gonna have over 100 slides of images that the BMM members can then use to have math talks with their students. I'm so excited to see how our mission ends up this month. So if you are a Build Math Minds member, don't forget, go get your picture taken, something mathematical, get it submitted so that you have a chance to win this month. And if you aren't a member yet of Build Math Minds PD site, then go to buildmathminds.com slash BMM for Build Math Minds to become a member. So here is what Bethany sent to us after she received her math goodie box. We just returned from winter break today and the goodie box arrived over the break. To say I'm overwhelmed and humbled is an understatement. Your generosity is well beyond anything I imagined or quite frankly feel I deserve. I will send a more formal thank you in the mail but wanted to reach out right away to pass my thanks on to anyone who had a part in putting it together for me. And yes, I have had this for a while. You can notice she sent this to me after winter break, uh, which was back in January. But Bethany, I really appreciate you letting us know that you enjoyed the goodies and you for sure deserve everything that is in there, my friend. Heidi, who works with me, she packed up all of those boxes um, and ships them out. And in fact, she ships out everything here at Build Math Mind. So if you ever purchase anything from our site, just know, one of my good friends is the one who packages it all up and I couldn't do it without her. And she helps me publish this podcast every week as well. So thanks Bethany for acknowledging the others who are out there helping me to get everything out to you guys. And Heidi, thanks for being a part of my team here at Build Math Minds. All right, let's get into the math stuff. It's been a while since I talked about ideas for building students understanding of measurement. Today, I'm going to share a piece from the book Guiding Children's Learning of Mathematics by Steve Tips et al. This book is a textbook, so it can be quite expensive. I'll link to the most current version, but I personally have the 12th edition. And if you can find a past edition and it's cheaper, I say get it. In my version of the book, there's a part in chapter 18 where they are talking about what teachers should know about teaching measurement. And the first section of that is about approximation, precision, and accuracy. On page 470 through 471, they start off the discussion about approximation. The fact that measurement is always approximate stems from the nature of measurement and measurement units. At least theoretically, for any unit of measurement chosen, another smaller unit exists. Counting the smaller units of measure yields a more precise measure for an object. For example, the height of a door measured with a meter stick might be more than two meters. If a decimeter is used to measure the door, the result might be a little more than 22 decimeters. Using a centimeter as the unit 
might show a measure of more than 222 centimeters, but less than 223 centimeters. And if it were practical to measure with millimeter units, the door might be a little more than 2,226 milliliters. Millimeters, not milliliters, millimeters. Each subsequent measurement is more precise, but the precision can be improved indefinitely, theoretically, if not practically, by measuring with smaller, still more precise units. Even if the measurement appears to be exact, we recognize that it is not. Saying exactly 12 o'clock or a football field is exactly 100 yards long is misleading. While you are saying 12 o'clock, the time has already changed. A marked football field is approximately 100 yards long rather than exactly 100 yards long. It may be one inch shorter or one inch longer than 100 yards. Precision and accuracy. The difference between precision and accuracy is important. Precision refers to units of measure. Inches are more precise than feet or yards. Millimeters are more precise than liters. Accuracy refers to the care with which a measurement is made. If the finish line for a 100 meter dash is only 99.8 meters, from that start line, then the measurement is not accurate. An inaccuracy of this sort would negate records set on the track. The need for precision and accuracy depends on the measurement setting. Ball bearings for the U.S. space program must be manufactured to a tolerance of 100 thousandth of a centimeter. Cutting cloth for a shirt does not require the same accuracy but miscutting by an inch can have serious results in fitting the shirt. An optician who measures the bifocal line inaccurately will prepare glasses unsuited for the user. Household measuring cups and spoons are precise enough for cooking, but not for chemical and pharmaceutical purposes. Measuring four cups of flour rather than three, however, may ruin the cake. Get in the picture there. So as you are having students work on measuring items, provide opportunities for students to discuss how measurements really are all approximations. Encourage students to be as accurate as possible, but remind them that it is an approximation. Then present opportunities for students to discuss how precise they need to be in certain measurement situations. So until next week, my fellow recovering traditionalists, keep building math minds.